All right, welcome to section 2.1. Um, we are going to be learning about functions and the graphs in this. I'd encourage you in this video, um, take down some of the examples. Um, definitely, I would write down each day, I'd write down uh, the goals for the day, um, and then kind of just take notes accordingly. I, I don't think it's important to write down everything. I think the bigger thing is to, to focus on understanding what we're doing. And today, specifically, we kind of have two goals, is to figure out, like, what does this mean to be a function? That's, that's goal number one. And then the second goal for us today is to determine to determine the domain and range for a function. So these words, domain, range, you're going to hear them a bunch um, throughout the year. And so just knowing what those words mean, I think, is, is a pretty important part for today's lesson. Sorry about the goofy ink there. Domain and range. All right. So, um, so what is a function? I thought maybe just have you look it up first instead of me just telling you everything. So I'll see what you, I'd pause the video here and see if you can figure out what a function is. <laughs> okay, so now that you've looked it up, um, what a function is, is it's just like a special type of equation. So if we kind of think of this um, world, if you think of this in terms of worlds, um, we might have, like if I draw a big circle here, um, this is all the equations that are in the world. So this part up here is representing equations. All right, and you've done these a lot. They just have an equal sign, something like 2x equals 8, or maybe another one would be y equals 4 plus 7 or whatever. Those are all equations with just one variable, either y or x. Okay, and so what a function is, a function is inside the world of equations. And it just has a special property of it has two variables. So like yx functions are probably the ones you're most used to, like y equals 2x. But it certainly could be examples like um, in the car, you know, you drive 60 miles per hour or something. So your distance, I should probably use d instead of c there, but your distance is equal to 60 uh, times the power. All right, so let's go back here and get some official definitions. Um, as far as a function goes, um, if you want kind of like a mathy definition, uh, it it is an equation equation with two or more variables. Again, oftentimes x and y, so like y equals three x plus six. That would be a pretty simple example. Um, and so domain and range, um, domain is uh, the values that are possible for the input, which in the example I gave above would just be x would be your input variable. And range is the values that are possible for the output, which in the example above would be y. So I think the best way I can explain range and domain and range is honestly like in a real life example, um, so just as a simple example, if you had a job, all right, maybe say that your pay at your job was equal to $10 times however many hours you work, right? So maybe we'd write it a little bit different way. We could do P equals 10 times H, right? And so what domain and range is, um, is domain is like what is possible for your input variable here, or input value, which in this case would be the hours. Hours are kind of like X. Right, so if we made a little table of what is possible here, like your hours, um, maybe some weeks you don't work at all, so it's zero, maybe you could work one hour, two hours, dot, 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 dot. And maybe there's like child labor laws and stuff, so the most you could work is 40 in a week. Okay, so in this case, we would say your domain, in this case, is zero to 40, right? Because that's what's possible for the input is you can only work zero to 40 hours. All right, and so for your range, then we'd say, all right, so what is possible for the pay? So if you work no hours, you get no money. Sad face for that day. If you worked one hour that week, you get 10. If you work two hours, you get 20. We're ignoring taxes and all that stuff here. And then dot, 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 dot. If you worked your max 40 hours, the max money you could get is 400. So maybe take a second and think, what do you think is range? If range is defined as the values that are possible for the output, what do you think makes sense for the range in this case? Okay, so if you haven't got it already, it's 0 to 400. P 
because uh, that's the possible money you can make is anywhere from zero to four hundred dollars. All right, and hopefully we'll get more of that as as we get going here. Uh, make more sense to you. All right, let's do let's do this one. So, just as another example, um, again we have two variables and a function. So, like in this case. We have to figure out like what is the relationship between the two variables okay and so the two variables are like the things that are can change i'm not fixed so like this 10,000 is not going to be a variable and this is not going to be a variable all right so again i would encourage you to pause the video and see what can you figure out what are the two variables here what are the two things that can change okay so hopefully you figured out that the two variables here the two things that are change is how much money i have total money and then the other part of it is the weeks, right? Because I lose so much money each week. Okay, so we could just write an equation and say that my money is I have ten thousand. Okay, and then I lose two hundred per week. Okay, and so that would be a function because it's a relationship between the money and the weeks. All right, so how about you? Quick again, try domain and range. What would be domain and range? Just think about what is possible, right? And let's assume that I can't go into negative money, right? In this case, well, that is a bad line. Apologize for that. Um, yeah, undo it quick. Uh, money, weeks, and money. All right, and so weeks, certainly we could have like, probably not negative weeks, but we could have the zero week, one, two, and then until I lose all my money. So I'm not exactly sure how long that is, but um, our money would be 10,000 to start with. All right, and then the after we, one week we'd lose 200. So it'd be 9,800 left. And then dot, 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 until I could get zero. I'm assuming I can't go into debt here. So our domain, not quite sure. We could do some math to figure it out, but it's zero to so many weeks. All right, I want to say it'd be about 50 weeks. That's kind of my guess. I think at 50 weeks, I'd have zero dollars. Um, and then a range would be um, 10,000 to zero. And typically, I suppose we'd write that in the reverse order, zero to 10,000. But realistically, it doesn't matter. Range is just like what is possible for that function. Okay. Um, so just to try and get to a little bit like what homework will look like for you is normally um, in a function you're used to your two variables being y and x so like in this example you'd normally have seen the function that way like y equals negative x plus 8 um, but there's also this thing called function notation so in function notation you have your input variable x that's the same as before but then um, you also have, instead of y being your output variable, you have this weird f of x, where f is actually not a variable. f is like the name of the function, and the whole variable is just f of x in this expression. Uh, but all this notation is saying is um, evaluate, right? So we have different values of x, different domain numbers. Like if x was 0, we put it in there, that would be 8, right? So you'd have 0 in our domain there and uh, 8 in our range. So all this is really saying is like, okay, like take this number for x and put it in as our input and then evaluate it from there. Okay, and so we have an input, a domain number of negative 4, and what is the output for that? And this gets a little goofy because this expression right here might be tempted to think that's a negative number, but it really just means opposite. So we're going to do the opposite of negative 4. So our input is negative 4, and then add 8. So we get something like 4 plus 8, okay, and so um, we get 12 there, right? And so you can start to see the domain range idea here, too, is for x, we've got a bunch of possible x numbers. Um, we've only listed two, you know, technically there'd be a lot more. Um, honestly, I think in this case, it's kind of weird, but domain could be anything, which you're going to start to see that called all real numbers, which I'm going to abbreviate with ARN. And that just means that x can be really anything, right? This isn't like a job example where there's some restriction on it. We can put any number we want here to the opposite and add 8, 
right? And similarly, um, our output can actually be any number too. Um, the, you know, if we want to make a certain number, we just have to find out the right x to get it. So like even 13, I think if we wanted the output of 13, we just need to use negative 5 here, right? So our range is actually everything again, which is they're going to call that all real numbers. And you'll see that a bunch. Again, we're going to domain and range throughout the year. So that's an important terminology to, to know. All right. Um, so that's what it means to be a function um, in domain and range. And then there's one other part of this, which is um, to be a function. So like they have this special rule about functions. Uh, we've got two variables. So this is another example here where we have the cost of the cookies and uh, how many cookies we buy. So it's $2.25 for your lunch plus $1 for every many cookies you get, right? So as an example, if you think about some, some examples here, if you bought no cookies, they would just charge you for the lunch. Okay, and then if you bought like one cookie, you'd have $3.25. Okay, and then if you bought two cookies, they'd charge you another dollar blah, 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 et cetera, et cetera, right? And I'm not sure what our domain would be. Probably, I don't know how many maps cookies you could buy here. Um, but anyways, the point is, this is considered a function, and it breaks, right? It, it's no longer a function um, if this rule isn't true. So this says, and this is something you probably want to get down and know it's here, is to be a function, each input can have only one output. And so in this example, we have these three inputs, 0, 1, 2. Okay, and so what this rule is really telling us is that in order to qualify as a function, um, we can't have uh, we can't have any repeated numbers that give us a different output number, right? So as an example here, like if if your buddy bought two cookies and was four twenty five, and then you went up and said, all right, I'm also going to get two cookies, and then they charged you a different amount, say they charged you like five dollars. Right, you'd be like, "What the crap?" I, you know, they why did I get charged seventy five cents more than my buddy? Okay, so if that happens, that's not a function. So the idea is this two can't lead to two different outputs. Right, that's not going to be considered a function. Okay, so um, basically, I think the hint that I always tell kids to look for—it's kind of like the cheat way to do this—is to look for repeated inputs, and if they lead to a different output number, then it's a problem. Right, and the, the hard part about this, honestly, is you can have repeated outputs, okay? Um, and that's, I think, what in the past has really given kids, kids trouble here, is if I was to do a little table in this scenario of cookies purchased and how much they charge you, right? So if, if we have one cookie, we said that was 325, but you could have a second kid come up to the cash register, get another one cookie, and 325 again. This is okay, right? You can repeat these inputs, or repeat these outputs as many times as you want. That's actually okay. Um, it's a repeated input with a different output. That's when it breaks down. Okay, so the assignment's going to look something like this, where they're going to have um, here's your inputs, your domain here, and your output, and you say, does it, is it actually a, a, a function or not? Okay, and so sort of the rule you have to look for is um, look for those repeated inputs again. So in this case, we have four twice, and because that leads to two different outputs, this one is not a function. All right. And then uh, just a different way to write it, x, y pairs. Uh, but it's the same idea. This one's repeated with a different output. So it fails. Same relation, just a different way. This is called a mapping table. So it's mapping the input of four to two different outputs. So again, this is not a function. These are all really the same relationship, looking at it. Um, and then the final part of this is looking at it graphically here, where um, if we were to look at these x, y pairs graphically, if we were to plot them, the reason why this fails as a function is this input of x of 4 has two possible output numbers, this one of 3 and negative 1. So there's going to be this test where if you draw a vertical line and it passes through two points, any vertical line passes through two points, 
then it's going to fail and not be a function. So in this case, right there makes it fail.